Well, I had a, a large family of four brothers and myself, so I was the only girl in a quite noisy, sporty household. And I think that led me to kind of slope off on my own and read while all this chaos was going on around me. And around the age of seven, I just simply fell in love with reading. Uh, and it was all that I wanted to do. And as I got a little older, I started to imitate what I was reading. So I'd write little stories um, based on Enid Blyton, whom I loved, or Alice in Wonderland, um, or the Just Williams stories. And then when I became a, an older child, perhaps just starting secondary school, I gravitated more towards reading poetry, and I did fall completely head, head over heels in love with um, Keats's Ode to a Nightingale. And then I would do my kind of little tribute to that. So it started through reading um, and then arriving at poetry at around 12. And I was always incredibly lucky all my life with my teachers. I had a fantastic teacher in year six at junior school, Mrs. Tilshire, whom I've written a poem about. And then great teachers in the um, secondary schools I went to who were very supportive. So by the time I went to university, um, poetry was bang in the centre of my life, um, both as a reader and as a kind of teenage um, writer of it. Sometimes poems just come to you, they surface out of memory um, or journeying or language itself. And uh, those, those poems feel like gifts. The opposite of that process would be um, a commission where someone gives you a subject and asks you to write a poem. And then there's, um, there's the hope that something in that subject, of the commission subject, will um, spark with something in oneself as a poet. And that can be very successful if that happens. The danger with the commission is if that doesn't happen, so it remains flat, it remains a subject you have to research and kind of crank up. And I find those very difficult, so tend to avoid them. Um, but in, you asked about process. I think my process is a kind of silence and a listening, which gathers strength over time and contemplation into a kind of the energy of utterance. So I have a rhythm of, of not writing and writing, which works for me. I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years' time. Um, I think we're all bombarded with, with multimedia and that kind of babble of, of noise and advertising and clamour and 24-hour rolling news, it's, it's inescapable for many of us. But I think art and artists will always recreate and, and come up through the cracks and evolve and challenge, so I, I don't have any worry about that. And poetry is a different way of using language and a different way of listening, so I think that, that too will, will always be there. I mean, not for everyone, but why should it be for everyone? It's, it's there for those who, who want to cherish it and go to it. A read. I mean, that's how I started, by imitation, by falling in love with, with poems, um, not necessarily one presiding poet, but many different kinds of poems and poets. And um, I think we learn by imitation and by reverence to, to older artworks. Um, so loads and loads of reading. I think um, creativity is, is hugely important in, in education. Um, everything tells us that. Drama, music, painting, um, art history, creative writing um, should be, you know, at the heart of the curriculum, I think. Mm -hmm.